Hello, can you hear me? Turn up my volume. Hello, everybody. Okay, mute on, mute off. I'm gonna close this door. See if we can get a live stream going today. All right. Well, I have a tangled mess, and my job today is to untangle it before I can use it. That's the whole plan for today. What have you got going on? Oh, there's five people already. Hello, everybody. Are you crocheting today? Please let me know if you can hear me or if I need to turn up the microphone even more. Hello, tell me that you're here. Today I'm untangling yarn. It's just one of those things that has to happen. One of the glamorous sides of crochet design. Great, hi Tom, Eli. Who am I speaking with, Tom or Eli? What do you go by? So last night, I was waiting up for my daughter to come home from a movie and I was crocheting, uh, sneak peek, I was crocheting and I, she came home and I put my work down and I went to bed and I forgot all about it. And then this morning, is it e Ellie or is it Eli? Like Ellie, like Ellen, or is it Eli like, I'm actually at work on your lunch. Hi, Gail, thank you for joining me. So, um, our daughter came home from the movie and I put my yarn down and I went to bed. Hey, Glenda, hi. And I woke up and Theo, my cat, had totally, um, Ellie as in Elisa. El Elisa, Ellie, good, good, good. Welcome, nice to meet you. Theo had gotten a hold of my yarn and pulled it all through the house while I was sleeping. And so I woke up to this tangled mess and I can't work it until I get it untangled. So my whole job today is to unravel this mess. I could just get a new skein of yarn, but um, I hate wasting yarn. It's very good yarn. This is Barocco vintage and it's in kind of a, kind of a brick color. Can you see it? Anyway, hi Lisa, hi Janice, Texas, Utah. Yes, Theo had lots of fun last night. He actually had two balls of yarn completely destroyed because I had made my prototype in like purple worsted weight red heart yarn, which was a great yarn, but for the project I need um, this yarn. And so I had my prototype out still connected to the ball and I was making my final project and Theo destroyed both balls. Luckily he didn't pull anything out because it's extremely rare. Let's see, let's see in my notes. Are you like Barocco Vintage? Oh yeah, I, Barocco Vintage is it's just an awesome yarn. Okay, I'm in Cincinnati. Can you see? Ah, oh, Cincinnati. I'm in Cincinnati. Um, but luckily last night, as I was putting my project down, I actually left the hook in the loop, which I never do. I always take out the hook. So I don't know why I left the hook in, but leaving the hook in is probably the only thing that saved my project from being completely frogged apart because he had yarn through the living room, all the way down the hallway, around, like caught on the corner of the stairs, all the way back. It was a mess. And if I hadn't had the hook in that last loop, he would have totally destroyed the project too. But luckily the hours of actual stitching are still intact. It's just the ball that's a mess that I now have to re-ball. Re so that's annoying. So let's see. Yeah, time and patience, no kidding. And usually I am pretty patient about um, untangling yarn. I'm pretty good at it after all this time. <laughs> But uh, it's really kind of breaking my heart because I really needed it this time. I, I'm on a deadline. Like I need to be spending this time stitching and I'm not. I'm spending time untangling yarn. And I could start over with a new ball of yarn, but then I would like have to restitch all of the yarn that I just did, like hours of work. So um, 
The good side of that is then I get to like retest my pattern while I'm restitching if I need to go back and, and stitch over from scratch. So as I'm looking down here while I'm talking to you, I'm trying to just pull this apart and see if I can make some progress on it. It's still attached to my project. So on one end, it's attached to my project and the other end, I'm trying to just keep going so that when I can get back to working, I can just pull out of the middle again. So that's the plan. But Theo kind to, kind of uh, kind of messed that up. What is on my jacket? Mother of Mercy Bobcats. Um, so I'm looking at my, my computer, my laptop, and it's reflecting back at me, which is probably why it's backwards. But um, that's my daughter's school for this year. We went on a college visit yesterday. No, yesterday? What is today? I have my days so confused. So today is Saturday. So we went on a college visit on on Thursday. And because it's Easter week, our kids are both off of school all week this week. And so I'm completely confused what day it was. So um, my husband, Tom, took off work on Thursday. And our daughter and I and Tom went to... Um, I don't know, should I, how much should I tell you? <laughs> we went to a college visit. And so because he was home, it felt like a Saturday. And then Friday, he decided to take the day off. And then that felt like sat, felt like a Saturday. And so today feels like Sunday, but it's not. So I am all confused. So today I am untangling yarn. Yeah, isn't it awful? Like I wanna cut it so bad, but I really prefer not to have cut ends in my project. So I'm trying really hard to, um, to not do it. And I'm getting a text from our boy who's saying, are you home? No, I'm not home. He is home with a broken leg. So he's texting me from the basement of the house and he thinks I'm still home. And I'm like, no, I'm not home. So. Does your family, like, instead of yelling through the house, like Roseanne TV sitcom style, we just text each other from various places in the house? Do you do that? <laughs> are we the only ones who are so lame that we text each other from the next room over? <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you have teenagers, right? I text my husband, too, in the basement. He's always in his workshop in the basement with, like, loud power tools and stuff. And I text him, and it's pointless. He doesn't even hear the phone anyway. So I still have to go all the way down there yelling his name and I have to knock on the door and he can't hear me and he's still yelling Then I wait for the power saw to stop because I don't want to startle him while he's using a power saw because we've been there done that not a good situation so <laughs> so anyway mostly we text each other from room to room ah uh, a live chat on a weekend sure why not Gloria hi from California your kitty did that once I swear I thought I put the ball of yarn down in a secure place. Like I put my tool bag over the top of it. <laughs> and I like put a couch cushion on the top of it. And I thought I was okay. Like it, and I thought the, the tool bag, the hook bag was too heavy for Theo the cat to get to the yarn. And it wasn't, he still found it. He must have been watching me. I tell you, this poor cat, he is so dumb. He's, he's just not very bright. He, it, it really surprises me that I had the yarn and I covered it up and he still knew it was there. <laughs> like I thought he would, like, you can't see it. It's not there. I thought he would, like, um, I thought he would forget or <laughs> as soon as it was like, oh, you can't see me kind of thing. But he, in the middle of the night, got a hold of it. And so I'm untangling this tangled mess in case anybody is just joining me <laughs> so that I can get back to stitching my secret project. I have some big secret projects. I have some really big news and I cannot, it's been so long and I've been like chomping at the bit to tell you all about it, but I'm not allowed yet. But you know, from experience with me that if I have big news that I'm not allowed to tell, you could probably guess what my big news is like, because I've, I've had big news in the past, right? With crochet. So you can probably guess it's one of a couple of really big things. <laughs> Let me read a few more notes. Hi, DJ, Northeast Pennsylvania. Hello. Yeah, apparently Theo is not that dumb. I thought he was a lot dumber. <laughs> now our cat Minnie, 
she's really smart, but I keep her in the basement at night because it's a finished basement, but I keep her down there because the two of them fight all night long. So they have to be separated. So Minnie is the bigger culprit. <laughs> so she gets put down in her own space at night so that we all can sleep because invariably they end up like tussling under the bed while I'm trying to sleep. So anyway, luckily um, they weren't both in my yarn last night just I knew it was Theo like there's no no escaping it I knew it was him and he even had a guilty look on his face today so it's him he's my bad yarn cat now I had a cat Charlie oh he was the love of my life Charlie and he, I had him for 16 years and he only would take my yarn if it was alpaca. <laughs> he was like such a yarn snob. He would leave acrylic alone. He would leave cotton alone. But if it was wool, he would play with it maybe. But alpaca, watch out. He was always a, a yarn hound for my alpaca yarn. Now, Theo, he'll go for anything. He, he's not, so he's not a yarn snob, but I'll give him that. He will absolutely destroy any yarn. And I have photos of him like grabbing the yarn out of my bag with his teeth and like carrying it around like a mouse. Like he, he'll steal it right out of my lap if um, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Does anybody else have pets who get into your yarn like that? I need to do better. I have a, um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a big like wardrobe like entertainment center type hutch thing in my living room. And there's no entertainment in there except yarn. It's all full of yarn and books and hooks. And it's in my living room. And it's kind of my compromise to try and keep my my business mess out of the family space to like close up that hutch. And so I usually throw stuff in there. But um, Chicky, our daughter, got home, you know, midnight or whatever last what I get. A tangled, tangled yarn mess. And I still have not decided if it's worth untangling. Like how many hours is it going to take me to untangle this mess versus how many hours is it going to take me to restitch as much as I have of the project? It's, it's a toss up at this point and it's frustrating. You can't wait for the big news. Oh, yes. Um, yes, Lisa, I'm on Facebook. So my brand all these years has been Go Crochet. So you can find me on Facebook as Go Crochet. And I have a website, ellengormley.com. So like under my shop section, you can see like my previous books and stuff. So um, Knit and Crochet Now, you can probably see current episodes of season eight um, that are on PBS Create generally. So as I'm looking down here talking to you, you can see that I'm playing with yarn. Maybe I should do this. You can see what I'm doing. But um, so yeah, big news usually goes to my um, newsletter subscribers first. So at ellengormley.com, you can subscribe to my newsletter. And in that newsletter, um, I generally try to give my newsletter subscribers free goodies before anybody else gets them. So like if I if I offer a free pattern, it goes through the newsletter. If I offer a free PDF, it goes through the newsletter. And um, I don't know if I'll probably if I'll continue that or not because um, that newsletter is not built up as fast as I wanted to it to. And YouTube, you all have just been so supportive. So I don't know if I'll try and release new new news <laughs> through YouTube um, instead of the newsletter. But if I'm going to release a free pattern, it comes through the newsletter. Like I'm never going to give like a free pattern on YouTube. It's just too many people and it's too many hours to design and to have it tech edited that I don't want it just out there. It needs to be a gift to people who are going to appreciate it. And I feel like my... Um, newsletter subscribers are there for the right reasons and appreciate my copyright and the fact that, you know, I'm trying to provide for my family and my newsletter subscribers are not likely to um, copy it and give it away, you know, so that kind of thing. So usually my newsletter subscribers um, get new news <laughs> before everybody else. So 
Can't wait for the big news. Yes, yarn is like an addiction for cats. They can't help themselves. That is so true. But, you know, isn't it kind of an addiction for us too? Just saying. Anyway, how many skeins of yarn do you have? You can tell I have a bunch because I keep giving it away. <laughs> I do have more giveaways coming on the YouTube channel here soon. Um, and I think the next one, I've got an unboxing coming up. And that one is going to have a giveaway attached to it. And that should be a pretty exciting unboxing because in that unboxing, I get to show you their new yarn, give away some of it, and there might be my big news reveal in it because that yarn company is helping me with my next big project. So um, I know some of my project stuff is going to be in that package too, like all in one box. So I have to like surreptitiously sort out so that I don't spill the big news. Um, but I'm thinking the big news will be within, I don't know, ten, a week or 10 days, probably. It's been so long coming. It's been um, a discussion since October that I've been working on this big news. And so, um, like I thought I was gonna get to reveal the news at Christmas time, and then they said no, and then I thought I was gonna get to reveal the news at Valentine's Day, and then I had to have some discussions with some people, and then, so finally, finally, I think the ink will be dry um, next week. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping by Wednesday of next week, I'll have signed the paperwork necessary, and at that point, then I will talk about my big news so what are you guys all working on what are you are you guys crocheting today you just keeping me company so i'm gonna try and dismantle some yarn here so today is saturday what all what do you guys do on saturday afternoons are you crocheting oh that last live stream i did a couple weeks ago on sunday it was like it was like uh, march the 11th or 12th that Sunday and I did my first live stream were you here for that so in the middle of the live stream I was doing the live stream on my phone because I hadn't figured out how to do it on the computer yet and while I was live streaming I got a phone call and I thought you all could hear me on the phone but apparently you couldn't apparently it just cut off completely for you well as it turns out my our son who's 15 was hiking in the woods behind our house like a mile away like i luckily i told him take your cell phone with you anyway he called in the middle of the live stream which of course is fine but it completely cut off for you guys and you didn't know what happened well he had called in and said mom i fell from a tree and i think i broke something and i was like i don't even know what to do and while i was getting the phone call i thought you all were hearing me on the phone with him and him saying that he had fallen. And um, I'm like, oh, okay. So I shut off the live stream real quick. And luckily my husband was home and we, we, we took off. So we drove the car a mile away down the road and I knocked on a neighbor's house who I hadn't met before and said, hey, my son is I think in your woods and he's fallen and he's lost and um, can I leave my car here? So he said yes. And so Tom and I took, went running through the woods. And um, so it took us probably 40 minutes to find him. Um, luckily, he was on his cell phone and I could hear his voice the whole time. And I mean, I mean, in the woods, he was like, I can see a deer stand. I can see a green sign that says conservation area. I'm like, great. So like, <laughs> that's not much to go on. So Luckily, um, yeah, I know I could try and find the other end, but the other end is attached to my project. So I'm not sure like where the other end is, but I can't like thread my thread un unravel through there. It's, it's just a tangled mess. It's just awful. Like I'm so despondent <laughs> of this stupid yarn, but anyway, back to my story. So uh, my newsletter, how do you get my newsletter? If you go to ellengormley.com, my name, E-L-L-E-N-G-O-R-M-L-E-Y.com, um, there's like right at the top, it says join now or subscribe now or something like that. That's So it's, it's a, a newsletter. Um, and then I send updates 
about once a month. I've only had this website since January because I had transferred over from my Go Crochet blog that I had had since 2011. So um, anyway, if you subscribe to the newsletter on ellengormley.com, then that's where likely the big news is going to be released first because I promised them they would get my newsletter subscribers would get the new, big news first. So anyway, so we found my son finally. And uh, luckily, my husband is pretty smart. And he's um, he had just hiked Mount Rainier Mountain last July. So he's a pretty experienced hiker. He had grabbed some um, electrical tape on the way out the door as we ran to go find him. And so um, Tom splinted up his Patrick's leg. And I, oh, my gosh, he had fallen from a tree. And, um, oh, Gail, I see, look, I got a notification that you subscribed. Thank you. Um, so your subscription was successful. So Tom splinted up Patrick's leg with electrical tape with two sticks and put him on his back. And we hiked out of the woods. It was probably a good half a mile over a creek and stuff. Luckily, thank God, he was conscious and he hadn't hit his head and, um, uh, it was in summertime, so like there's no leaves on the trees, so we could see a good distance. And the water, luckily, on the creek was really low, so you could actually walk across the creek in spots. And so that's what we did. We hiked out to the car, put him in the back of the car, and drove home. And by then, it was like Sunday late afternoon, so um, I just took him to the orthopedist the next morning because... Our kids have broken so many bones. I don't even bother to go to the emergency room anymore. We just put some ice on it, try to get the swelling to go down, and then see the orthopedist in the morning. Um, and that's what we did. And so he got he had two breaks, um, one on his one in his ankle, and the other is the leg bone on the other side, but really low down by the ankle. So he actually broke like bones on both sides of his ankle. So he was in a cast up over his knee until yesterday. So Glenda, he's now got a cast under his knee. So he's not in the wheelchair anymore. So this all happened during the live stream last time. So you can see why it took me another two, three weeks to get it together to try and do again. He's like, no more broken bones. So it's bad. So he is home. Anyway, so that whole, you're an expert untangler. Yes. Newsletter, put the newsletter link in the chat. Oh, I guess I could. Duh. I guess I could put that in there. I don't know if this will actually link or not. Try that. Um, hi, Norma. No, you didn't miss the live. Kimmy, I know. Oh, my gosh. Norma, ouch. Totally ouch. Ah, oh, Gloria, you're working on Entrelock Tunisian lap gam. Well, that's cool. You know, those, I, I don't know how to put it into words, but Tunisian crochet, linked stitches, and foundation crochet, like the foundation single crochet that I just posted the other day, like it's all like exactly the same. I mean, it's like, it's different, but the same. Like the concept is very much the same. So I just got to know that Lisa subscribed. Thank you. So that's up, great. So linked stitches, Tunisian crochet, and the foundation stitches. Is that true for double crochet foundation? I know it's definitely true for single crochet foundation. It's all essentially the same. Kind of rocked my world to like piece that all together, but it all has to do with working, pulling up loops, and then how you work them off. So those things. So I've got a linked stitches tutorial coming for you soon. Um, I need to look at it again because I feel like I made a mistake in it. So I'm still editing it and I want to make sure that it's correct before I let it go live. And then, um, of course, Tunisian crochet, you know, you're picking up loops. If you do it in simple stitch, it's like the same exact thing as a linked stitch. So there's that coming up. Tunisian is hard, but you'll keep trying. Absolutely. It's so much fun once you get the hang of it. And, um, you know, just start small. It's not brain, you know, brain surgery, so it doesn't hurt if you make a mistake. So you just rip it out. It's just yarn. So you've got nothing to lose but to try, right? That's my motto. Looking forward to all the new stitch tutorials. Yeah, I actually have a book with me today. 
I'm at uh, my daughter's language school. She takes language lessons on the side outside of school time. And so they let me have an empty office so I could hang out while she's in lessons. So, um, so I'm not at home, but I brought a book with me to a stitch dictionary with me so that I could earmark which, um, which stitches that I want to do tutorials on in the future. Definitely a lot of Tunisian ones because I don't think there's a whole lot of those on the on YouTube. And so I want you to be able to have access to some of those. A lot of them don't even have names. They're just like a number. So I'm trying to figure out how to label those um, on for like YouTube videos so that you can find them. Cause that's kind of, you know, it would be like st Tunisian stitch 46 or something. And cause they don't all have, fun names like honeycomb stitch or something, which I guess I could just come up with something, but what if somebody comes up with something different and then it's all confusing? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll let you all name them. So yes, just tutorials are coming up. Um, I want to do more live streaming just because it's fun and I don't have to edit it. It's fun to hang out with you guys. Um, and then definitely giveaways. Um, giveaways probably um, after this like a round of uh, four, four in a row. I had one a week for four weeks and then I had the Valentine's one. So I've done five now. I think they're probably gonna slow to um, maybe closer to once a month now, just um, just because that's just a lot. It's a lot in postage to like remember to ship everything out. So I've got one to ship on Monday that this last prize, the Cascade Sun Seeker Pack, that is going to ship out on Monday because I didn't get to it yesterday. And um, Chris, oh, Chris had already won and received her package for the um, the Inca Alpaca. So that was a fun prize for her. And um, I'm assuming you're a her. Sorry, Chris. I'm assuming, but I don't, um, I can't tell always by YouTube, you know. Let's see. Um, so Chris won the Inca Alpaca excuse me, and Anna won the Louette with the, the square handled hook. So Anna um, messaged me that she received her prize. And then the um, Cascade Sun giveaway was won by, um, uh, it was a hard one for me to remember. It was like live life and love, love crochet something. I can see your picture. I'm more of a visual person, so I can see your little icon with your your little name and I have all your information on my email. So that'll go out to her on Monday. So real people are winning the prizes. I pick the prizes by um, random number generator. So, um, you know, it's so sweet of you all to tell me your stories and what you would do with the yarn. And I'm always so curious to hear what you would do with the yarn if you won. But that's that it's chosen by random number generator. Like I'll pick a number, you know, I'll go to random number generator and tell it to pick a number between one and however many comments there are that are not mine. And then I count to get to that number. And then that's, that's who wins. And then it use, it needs to be someone with um, a U.S. postal address um, because it's too expensive to ship everywhere around the world. So um, that's, that's the plan. So let's see, what else do you want to know? Do you have any questions? So, so I've got the big, I've got the big news coming up probably in seven to 10 days. And um, I can't wait to tell you about that. And you know, I already have books out, right? So Go Crochet Afghan Design Workbook is, was my first book in 2011. And then I did, um, which one came next? I did Marvelous Crochet Motifs with Annie's. And then I did Learn Bruges Lace. I think Learn Bruges Lace came first um, with Annie's. So I had to do some tutorials on Bruges Lace. I love Bruges Lace. And then, um, which is all crochet, by the way, Learn Bruges Lace. It's a Bruges Lace. It's a crochet technique that's reminiscent of Bruges Lace, but it's not like bobbins and pins and stuff it's all crochet and it's all double crochet and chains. Like you totally can do it. Um, it's not super, super hard. And then I did, um, I co-authored a book with Shelby Alaho. Um, well, she, she's still in Kuwait. She lives in Kuwait. She's an American and she lives in Kuwait. And we co-authored a book called um, Crocheting Clothes Kids Love. And that was in like 2014. 
And then I wrote a book called Go Crochet Skill Builder. And that's been a couple years now. And then I was on, I was the editor of um, Crochet Magazine, of course, for three years. And I was on the TV show Knit and Crochet Now for um, five seasons total. But it took us seven years to do it because there was one or two years that we didn't do a season. And I came on like season two, something like that. So I think I was like season three, four, five. Is that right? Six, seven? No, it must have been four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I must have been. I was on that for five seasons. Um, so that I've been busy with all of those things. So um, by my big news is is something similar to one of those items I just mentioned, but um, but I can't tell yet. So hopefully I'll get to tell you soon. So in the meantime, I've been um, doing a lot of YouTube videos and um, building, I built the website back in January and the YouTube, YouTube has been right on tar target with that right after that. And um, the newsletter, I've put out some free stuff in the newsletter and um, always designing Red Heart, you know, whoever, Red Heart, I like crochet. I haven't designed any more for crochet magazine since I left um, there, but um, I guess mainly Red Heart and I like crochet since I left the magazine. So always designing, always have books and binders and notes and stuff flying everywhere. So my passion lately just has been you guys, you know, just trying to give you content that you'll enjoy, that you'll have fun with and um, be myself and see what happens and see what opportunities come up and see what I'm supposed to do next. And so that's where I am. So entrelock, somebody was making an entrelock blanket, Gloria. So what else are you guys doing? Are you guys knitters too? Do you, um, I do knit as well. I'm not nearly as good at knitting, um, but I crochet, obviously crochet is my first love. And do you, I mean, do you want to learn to knit? Do you want me to do some tutorials on um, beginner knit from the perspective of a crocheter? Um, I know a lot of you knit already, um, so I don't know if that would be useful to you. So whatever, lots of Tunisian stuff. You guys probably, you seem to like the Tunisian tutorials, so I'll do those. The unboxings are fun, aren't they? So. I'm lucky enough because uh, that I was with the magazine and the TV show for so long and written a couple books for so long that a lot of the yarn companies know me, like I know them personally and have worked with them for years. So it's really fun to um, have them send me their new products. And the big yarn convention, um, it's called the National Needlework Association, National Needle Arts Association. And that is always in like June in Columbus, Ohio, but I think this year it's going to be in Cleveland. And that is when they kind of reveal all of their fall and winter yarns for the next season. So I anticipate a lot of those companies will, um, will send me new stuff, you know, as they're getting ready to reveal their brand new yarns for the winter and fall. So um, that'll be fun. Also big news in the crochet and yarn world, um, Taki Stacy Charles, Taki Yarn, who I did an unboxing for Taki a few weeks ago, um, they sold. They sold to um, Webs. I, I couldn't believe it. So Kimmy, Kimmy subscribed to the newsletter. Thank you, Kimmy. So Taki Stacy Charles, which... Um, Stacy Charles is a man who founded the company and I don't remember why it's called, why Taki came in there, but anyway, the company is called Taki Stacy Charles TSC and they have been in business out of like Pennsylvania, New York, uh, area and they sold to webs. So that's huge. So, um, I have no idea what's going to happen there. It'll be really interesting to see if they stay, if Taki Stacy Charles stays as a brand or if they, if Webs makes, because Webs makes their own yarn too. They have Valley Yarns and they have, I forget what other brands they have, but Webs has their own yarn. And so it'll be interesting to see if they keep the Taki Stacy like 
um, labeling or if they get all new yarn or I don't even know how one goes about buying a yarn company. So they're acquiring one when they already have one. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens there because the whole yarn industry it's like so many like indie dyers now, so many little tiny places. Um, and then there's just like a few really big ones, big yarn companies like Red Heart and Peyton's, which is actually spin right. And they, they like buy up. And then, so there's like a couple really big ones and then lots of little indie hand dyer people, which are fabulous, but it's hard for me to work with a lot of the indie dyer yarn because if I want to publish it, in a book or a magazine or on TV or something, not, it's hard to get. It's like, you can't go to Walmart and get it. You can't even go to um, like your local yarn store, your LYS and get some of these indie dyers because they're so uh, concentrated. They're just like, they sell on the internet and they only make a dozen. And then, you know, you can't get the exact dye lot over again, or you can't get, it's harder for you all as consumers to get. So I, I tend not to use the indie dyers, even though they're gorgeous and they come up with such gorgeous things. But I tend to try to, I try to use yarns that you all have access to either through Joann's or Walmart or your local yarn store or from a big um, website where you can order. And I know that you're going to be able to get the yarn pretty easily and it won't necessarily break your wallet. Although sometimes I don't know how much something costs when, um, you know, when an editor or when a buyer wants me to use a yarn, I don't always know the retail cost of it. Like they don't, they don't tell me or, and I don't look it up. And, and then I don't realize that like the Louette gems, the blanket that I made out of that, um, it was all Merino wool. And I, it was probably a $600 blanket. You know, it's such so awesome to make it, but like if you had to like buy the yarn and make it yourself for a gift, you know, it really showcases their yarn and it's a great advertisement for them. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know if consumers necessarily are going to spend that kind of money on a blanket that you're going to use, <laughs> maybe for a wedding present or something. I don't know. So um, everybody has different budgets. So... Oh, a tutorial on the reverse single crochet? Absolutely. Okay, let's learn, read a couple comments here. Yes, please, beginner knit for crochet tutorials. Absolutely, glad to do that. Um, you got into the making of Amigurumi dolls. That is a lot of fun. I need to like brush up on my um, experience with the um, invisible increases and decreases. I know there's a way to like increase and decrease in single crochet, especially when you're making the amigurumi dolls so that it's less noticeable. So I need to do that. But yeah, I'm glad you're making those. Tutorial on reverse single crochet. Yes, absolutely. Easy peasy. <laughs> we also call that the crab stitch. And it's supposed to be lumpy and look sideways. So you really can't get it wrong. You just go the opposite way. And so yeah, I'd be glad to do a tutorial for you on that. You're new to crochet. Just found my videos. Hi, Donna. Do you post left-handed tutorials? Um, you're a lefty and learn better. No kidding. I wish I, I can crochet, single crochet, left-handed. Um, but that's about it. I, I can do it. I can describe it. But I don't know if it's going to be enough for you to get the full learning um, that you deserve. Like, Because I, I don't believe people should ever switch hands. Like, If you're a lefty, it's okay to be a lefty. I'm not going to force you to be a righty. Um, I think you should stay with what you're comfortable with. But in terms of um, that's not my gift. So I will do what I can. But I, I really wish that I could do more lefty work. But I will have to just wait and see if I can get that done. So also with the camera angle, like the camera is backwards for me. And this is my right hand, which is showing up. Um, so I don't know if me having the camera turn the other way so that you're reading it backwards helps or not. So let me investigate that. Okay. Reverse is, Kimmy says, reverse is so pretty for finishing hats or slippers. Absolutely. Um, yes, that's a great edging to like just finish it off and have a, it's not a smooth edge so much. It's kind of bumpy, but um, it's smooth in terms of, it's, it's almost like a cord 
that goes along the edge, the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. And it just finishes it. Like nothing is loopy, nothing sticking out. <laughs> you know, it just, it finishes it and it's done. So I think the reverse single crochet is a great stitch. And it's really fun to do on the surface of things too, to add a little bit of texture. You can do it like if you're crocheting in the um, back loops only on a project and then the front loops are left unused, then when you're done with the project, you can go back over and put a reverse single crochet cord using the unused lo front loops from the stitches you didn't use <laughs> when you did the back loop only. So that's kind of cool. So you, so my point is the reverse single crochet does not have to only be on the, on the edge. You can also put it other places in your project if you leave loops unused. Let's see. Okay, somehow the videos can be flipped to lefty. Oh, good point. You're right, I, I could do that. I, hmm. I think that would work. That's a really good point, Donna. I know that I, when I'm editing videos, I totally can click a mirror function. So I will try that and see if that works. And then um, Donna, then I'll, I'll need your feedback to see if that is sufficient for your learning. Okay, we'll give it a try. Absolutely. Um, Cause I think I can even do the exact same video and like edit, when I'm editing it, like save it one way and then edit it the normal way or not normal, sorry, the right handed way, <laughs> the way that I made it, you know, the, uh, the original orientation. So let's see. Oh, Chris, there's Chris. Hi. Uh, Chris is the one who won the last Inca alpaca prize. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ellen. Another edging is using two colors and overlay them. And you could show how to do that. Absolutely. So um, if you're thinking of the same one, I'm thinking, well, there's tons of ways to overlay it. As a matter of fact, I have an entire class on edgings at anniescatalog.com. It's, um, what's it called? Crochet edgings for the perfect finish. And so if you go to anniescatalog.com, the class is on there and there's 12 edgings and some of them are like really, there's like a couple simple ones that you can use with any multiple. And then there's some harder ones that are like have to be done with a multiple of six or whatever so that you get like points or you get like flags or something evenly spaced around. So lots of different edgings. Kimmy and Gloria. So Gloria subscribed to my newsletter. Thank you. So you're right, Chris, there's tons of edgings. And there's one that's like chain stitches where you like single crochet in one color, chain five, skip four, single crochet, and you do that all the way around. And then you do another color and you use the unused stitch and you chain five and you go in front of or in back of so it looks like a little twisted two color thing all the way around the edging. We totally could do that, absolutely. Kimmy says, oh, you like it? Oh, yeah, making an afghan. Yeah, it's a great, great thing to have. Okay, Donna says the mirror function. Woohoo. Okay, great, Donna. I'm so glad you mentioned that because now I have a better understanding of how I could actually accomplish it. So I'm, um, yeah, let's give it a try. Absolutely. Okay, back loop only BLO looks funny. Back loops. Yes, not only blowing bubbles. Yes. So yes, congrats to Chris, because Chris won the Inca Alpaca giveaway. And um, so that's good. So real people do actually win my giveaways. I've not done like, I have had mixed feelings about doing videos, like announcing the winner, because um, then I, I don't know if I, how I feel about like putting up a video, like saying, yay, you won. And then, oh, but who cares? Nobody will need to see this video ever again. So do I just take it down? <laughs> you know, like why make a video that's not going to stay up for a while? You know what I mean? So I'm still trying to figure out like the best way to notify people and um, make sure that they have a U.S. address because I can't tell by the name, like if there's a U.S. address attached to the profile or not. And then if I click on somebody's profile to like find a way to message you when you've won, it doesn't tell me like anything. <laughs> it does not, it's not helpful <laughs> in terms of tracking you all down to give you your prize. So um, 
anyway, I don't know what my point was. I guess I'm just rambling at this point. Okay. Oh, bye, Lisa. Okay, thanks for chatting. You probably have to go back to go back to work. I, were you? I think you were on your lunch break. Different borders for blankets. Absolutely, there's a gazillion borders for blankets, and um, I usually, when I design blankets, I come up with a border specific to that blanket. It's very rare for me to um, apply an edging that's like from a book on. A blanket that I designed like I designed a new border to go with it so it's almost like there's a different border for absolutely every project there is so there's there's a ton and people it's funny how people are like you know gosh Ellen how many how many crocheted things can you possibly design you know there's only so many stitches right and it's like well yeah but how many notes are there in music and how many millions of compositions are there? Like, yes, there are basically, I don't know, I don't even know music. I'm not good at music, but like that our daughter plays. It's like, I know there's like, what, nine notes? But when you change the octave and you change the instrument and you change the tempo and you change, you know, all these factors, you can have a gazillion, like literally different compositions. Well, crochet is really the same way. You know, there's only so many stitches, but when you change the yarn and you change the product and you change um, the shape and you change, like, then the possibilities are really infinite. So, yes, no, it's not all been done before. Well, I guess it has, <laughs> but, but we put it together in new, hopefully, ways over and over again. So I'm not reinventing the double crochet. It's been around forever and, um, you know, maybe some stitches are rediscovered, but probably, oh, let's face it, somewhere along the line, somewhere in some culture has done linked stitches before, and they've done single crochet foundation before. It's like, it's not like inventing something that's never ever been accomplished before. Maybe it's never been written down. Maybe it's never been publicized. Maybe it's never had a name, but um, it's part of our, all of our cultures to do crochet and knit and 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 find ways to create clothing and create products so um, I'm not inventing anything new hopefully I find new ways to put things together but um, I'm not so arrogant to think that I like pioneered the granny square Let's see DJ says a video using replacement yarns for those of you who can't use wool or wool blends absolutely so my good pal Brenda um, is allergic to, to wool and alpaca and wool blends, anything that has wool in it. And, you know, how awful is that to be a, a crochet designer and not be able to use wool? But um, she mainly uses um, cotton, silk, rayon, linen, um, and they do act differently than wool. Hi there. Am I being too loud? I'm on a live chat. Oh, how many people are? I have seven people right now. You want to come say hi? No. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can pause you guys for just a minute. I'll be right back.
sorry, thank you for being patient. So Mara was on break from her class and she came in and I thought maybe I was being too loud. <laughs> so, so I'm back, thank you for your patience. A video on replacing yarns, yes. Um, and I was saying that animal fibers really do act differently than cottons and linens and plant fibers. So um, my designer friend, Robin Chichula, you guys probably know her, Crochet by Faye, she's awesome. She had like the best description I've ever heard for like describing the difference between animal fiber and plant fiber. So they both can be really soft and they great have a, they both have a great place in the world for yarn. But when you think about animals <laughs> like sheep and alpaca, you think of them like boom, 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 like jumping along, happily springing along. They're not rooted like plants. So the animal fibers themselves are springier. They will bounce back better when washed and used than plant fibers, which are rooted and don't bounce and jump. And so they tend to, when they jump or when you stretch them, they tend to stay. So like cotton grows, bamboo grows, like when you pull it, it stays in that next state of being how, wherever you put it, where animal fibers, when they bounce around, they bounce back. So um, yes, we can talk about how to substitute, but the truth is, is that, you know, you can't make a plant be an animal and you can't make an animal be a plant. <laughs> They're just two different, two different things. So, but um, most often it's important that you have the right gauge and um, that you know how to block it properly so that you can get the most out of it. And, um, some of them are softer than others. There's a lot of plant fibers that are super, super soft. And there's a lot of animal fibers that are coarse and itchy. So there's room for both in the world, but, um, but they have kind of different applications. So stiffness, enormous. Yeah, some are, you know, it's amazing how many cottons are like super, super stiff and crunchy. And then other cottons are extremely soft and pliable. So, um, you know, it just depends yarn to yarn, you know, how, what it's going to be like. So, um, I don't know. I like them all. Acrylic, there's a great, there's an important role in the yarn world for acrylic too, you know, there's, um, which is unlike an animal and a plant fiber. So there's, there's room for everyone in this beautiful magical world. So I'm not, a, I'm not a yarn snob. I love, I love animal fibers, but there's a great place for, um, for, for acrylic yarns too. Like there's a lot of really good uses for it. And I use it a lot. And I didn't even know there was anything other than acrylic for probably the first 10 years that I was crocheting because I started crocheting, I think somewhere around the age of eight, um, or 10. And of course, all we used was like perfect match yarn from Kmart, you know, that's, that's where I learned that, you know, they sold leisure arts books. And when I was in, you know, when I was in college, when I was a little bit older and I picked up crochet again, I'd wait till, you know, the yarn books would go on sale at Joanne Fabrics or whatever, and they'd have a coupon. And I would go buy a leisure arts book that had 25, 30 or whatever Afghan designs in it. And then I'd go across the street to Kmart and buy perfect match yarn. And I'd be in that yarn aisle for like, an hour and a half choosing colors and doing the math of how many skeins I needed. And, um, you know, I, I only knew acrylic existed. I didn't, I didn't really even think about the idea of using wool, you know, for a blanket, you know, that I always thought wool was like heavy and expensive and wood felt and, um, acrylic was good enough. So why not? And acrylic certainly has come a long way over the years. It's a much, much better quality. Although I'm not going to say which brand, but there was a, um, I was, I had a project that I had to make in acrylic for a company recently in the past year. And the yarn, you could see the plastic in it. 
I mean, you could see it. It was, it was, for example, like a dark red yarn. And you could see this thin line of white clear plastic through it because acrylic is plastic. And so it, you could see the plastic. I mean, it was, it was, it was horrible. Like that's not the way yarn is supposed to be. And then I was, I pull, I like to pull from the center of the skein and I pulled from the center of the skein and out of the middle came this huge, like stuck blog, blop, blob, blob of stuck melted acrylic yarn. It looked like, um, like a rosette. It looked like a rose. It was like all twisted, 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 twisted. And it was crunchy and plastic and stuck together. Like, cause you know, acrylic melts, it's plastic. It will like actually melt. And so it was like, I don't know how this happened, but, um, it literally had a melted piece in it bigger than a golf ball. And you couldn't even undo it because it was melted on itself. It's like, oh man, this is bad. So luckily I had enough yarn, good yarn to make the project for the company. And I, I sent the design director a photo of the blob. And I was like, I mean, you could hit it on the table. It was horrible. And so she asked me to send it back, of course, so that they're, um, quality control or whatever could um, see it but I was like so glad that like somebody didn't buy that at the grocery at the at the store it was really bad the afghan you're making for your daughter could be on the cover of that magazine which one crochet which magazine um so okay anyway so I'm, I'm confused by, oh, the leisure arts, the leisure. Well, it was a book. It, they were books. They would, they was, this was like back in the early nineties when I was in college. Um, and they, they had books that were probably, I don't know, 85 or 90 pages long. And there were probably 25 blanket designs in each book. And there were volume after volume after volume. I probably had, 20 of them and they each had 20 designs in there and they were like a thick paperback glossy so it wasn't a magazine it was more of a book but it was they didn't come out like monthly or bi-monthly or anything anyway um that's really how i got started with designing because at one point i was like well these somebody has to make these designs that go in this magazine like why couldn't I do that too? And so I started looking in the back of the leisure arts mag, uh, leisure arts books. They would list the contributor credits, so like the names would be there, like Tammy Hildebrand, <laughs> who then later became one of my best friends. So Tammy Hildebrand, and you know Margaret Wilson, and Agnes Russell, and um, Margaret Hubert, and like all these names, which they were just I didn't know them at the time, but like they're all the contributors to the. Um, to that volume would be listed in there. And I was like, you know what, these are real people. And if they're designing these things, you know, wh why couldn't I do that too? And so the very first design, I designed a blanket and I sent it to Leisure Arts and they bought it on the first try. I was shocked, absolutely shocked. But then I sent in, I don't know, it was probably close to a hundred, a hundred one zero zero hundred designs over the next year and every single one of them was rejected so i sold one and then a hundred for an entire year was rejected and it wasn't until i started um then i started sending them to red heart and kathleen who was in charge of the designs at red heart at that time bought like 11 of them all at one fell swoop. I will never forget the phone call. She called me and she's like, Ellen, you know, we want, we want them all. I mean, I was like, what do you mean you want them all? She's like, all of them. Like I'd send in like, I'd send in like 10 or 11 or 12 or something at one time. And she's like, we want to buy them all. And I was like, I thought like I had won the lottery. And so that was like the most amazing thing. But it had been a year. It had been a good solid year and 100 rejections since I had sold my first one. So it's not like 
it's not like it was super easy, you know? And then after that, after I sold like the 10 or 11 or whatever it was to Red Heart, then things started to pick up. And that was by then like 2003, because our son was born and I was staying home with them and trying to, um, trying to make money on the side while he, while they were, they were little, our son is the younger one. And so, um, you know, just got, just started my career. And like, I like, I like to say that my career grew as the kids grew. <laughs> and so now we have a, you know, almost 17 year old and a 15 year old and, um, things have just evolved over time. Kimmy P. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I thought this was, they were older. This one is teal, purple, orange, green, white. They should be on the couch. Oh, from the 70s show. The blankets you're talking about were even older than that. Ripple stitch back loops only. Oh, totally. Those are so much fun. You've, I mean, I love to catch um, crochet on TV and I'll take a screenshot of it if I can, if I'm watching on my tablet and put it in um, on my blog as um, crochet in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> so like um, that show, This Is Us, had a ton of great crochet, like 70s style crochet when they were like flashing back to when the kids were young. Do you remember, do you watch that show? So like that show and um, uh, the one with the, the Gilmore Girls, there was some good crochet in that one too. Um, the um, Because the best friend, the the younger daughter, the daughter's best friend's mom owned like an antique store. <laughs> and there was like a crocheted granny square in the background of that all the time. So I love to see crochet like on TV or to catch it, like people wearing it or catch it like in the background, like an Afghan thrown over the back of a chair. I even, I even this is so embarrassing. Um, I even saw some good crochet. Well, I don't know good. <laughs> <laughs> some interesting crochet on um, the Bachelor shows, like the Bachelor in Paradise. Usually somebody's wearing, not usually, like once a season, you'll see like somebody wearing like a crocheted sarong or something and um, or a crocheted bikini, which is, I think, hilarious. So it's it's fun to see crochet like in the in the wild is what I call it, like out in the world or on TV. So very fun. So, Kimmy P, it's all back now, according to your kids. They ask you for crochet. Oh, that's awesome. Roseanne and Big Bang Theory have classic gray square blankets on the couch. That's true. Yes, absolutely. I do remember the Roseanne one. Matter of fact, I think some people are starting to try and um, capitalize on Roseanne, the show, being back um, and, like, redesigning a granny square blanket like Roseanne style I'm like okay <laughs> like that was that was like 40 years ago <laughs> but hey if that's but you know it's great to make scrap blankets for sure and and you know granny squares are great for that so anyway I'm not making a huge a lot of progress I'm making some progress but not a huge lot of progress I'm probably going to sign off here in just a few minutes but um this has been so much fun. I really appreciate all of you guys like keeping me company while I untangle this yarn and giving me some ideas on edgings and reverse single crochet and lefty by mirroring my video and editing and um, all knitting for beginner beginners. So yeah, a lot of great ideas and I appreciate them and please keep them coming. Um, if you guys really like the videos, it would be really helpful if you would share them. Like I need to get to a thousand subscribers um, pretty quickly here so that I can start uh, making more videos for you. I'm still going to be doing as many as I can, but this big secret project is going to have, have me kind of busy and I'm excited about that. But um, I want to keep making videos for you. So if we can get up to a thousand subscribers, that would really go a long way toward making it possible for me to continue to do quality content. So if you see a video that you like, that it's, you know, something you could share with your uh, best yarn friend or whatever, you know, share it. I'd really appreciate it. Of course, come see me at, um, on Facebook at Go Crochet. You know, I think if you just search Ellen Gormley Go Crochet, there's both my personal profile, which I don't accept any new 
people unless I know them in person. Or there's my my professional page, my Go Crochet page. So check out Go Crochet. Check me out at ellengormley.com. Um, I do have a shop there and I have, um, uh, even when I don't sell things, like some of my patterns are there under like crochet patterns. So then it links you to places that you can buy them. And of course I've got all the, um, all of the online classes that I taught through Annie's at anniescatalog.com. There's um, crocheting with beads, uh, learning to crochet lace, bruise lace, broomstick, and bruise lace, broomstick, and what was the other one? Hairpin, hairpin lace. And of course the new edgings class is up. There's a granny squares, how to join granny squares. There's how to, you know, how to make granny squares. I think there's seven classes that I teach at anniescatalog.com and those are um, you pay for them and then you can watch them on their website 24 7 forever and you can ask questions and I will do my best to get back to you within 24 hours on those and so there's lots of different ways that you can learn but all of my new content is at YouTube and subscribing to the newsletter so Hmm. Anything else you guys want to talk about today? You're happy you didn't miss the live. Thank you, Norma, for stopping in. I'm happy that we got to do it. And um, I'm going to sign off. But thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Please go ahead. And um, I, as you can see on YouTube, I do read and reply to just about every comment that I can. So if you ever have uh, wishes or, you know, stitches you want to learn, chime in and let me know and I will make a note of it and put it on my chart, my to-do list. So I do have a chart of all these ideas that I'll be adding as soon as we're done here today so that I don't forget them. Love the haircut. Oh, thank you. I just didn't curl it today <laughs> and not much makeup on today either. Very casual Saturday. So thank you for in the glasses, got my reading glasses on. So Thanks for letting me be me and be casual and not be all glam every single day. So appreciate that. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thanks so much.